Hello everyone, Sally here and welcome back to another Bedrock Edition tutorial. Today I'll be showing you how to build a bunch of different secret entrances and secret redstone activations in your Bedrock Edition worlds. I'll be showing you how to build 18 of these in total. Some of these are old and you might have seen before, however some of these I believe are brand new and may never have been done before in Minecraft. So I'm very excited to share all of these with you today. The sky is the limit when it comes to the possibilities you can do with all of these secret entrances entrances and activations. Really, you can do just about anything you can possibly imagine with this kind of secrecy. The most common uses are, of course, access to secret bases, secret passages, safe rooms, armories, vaults, valuables, storage, or really just about anything that you don't want other people finding or that you want to hide away in your world. There are so many different possibilities, and really, it's just quite a fun thing to play around with. So let's talk about the terminology real quick. First of all, a secret entrance is something that is completely hidden away from plain view. If you're looking at this wall or the floor, you can't tell that anything is amiss. But of course, we have a very obvious button right here as a placeholder and demonstration. As you can see, we now got ourselves a secret entrance to go down into this area. And of course, we can get back out of here as well. Now, a secret redstone activation is something that is completely hidden and you can activate a bit of redstone to then open a piston door or open something else somewhere in the world. So, for example, if we throw a trident at this bell right here, you'll notice that it activates that piston right over there, which is quite the fun thing, and this is possibly my favorite form of secret activation. A secret activation is basically the exact same thing as a secret entrance, because if you're activating redstone, well, secret entrances are made out of redstone. So it's basically the exact same thing, just slightly differently. So for example, using this bell trick right here, we could then have that power, this piston door, and then go down into our secret area. Or we could have that power, this jab door, for example, and then walk into our secret area like so. So secret activation is just a slightly different form of a secret entrance, and it's just as useful, if not actually more useful, because because so many more things than entrances can be built using redstone. You could have one of these secret activations turn on your redstone farms, or activate traps around your base, or pop up an armory, or a crafting table, or whatever you want to do. Again, the possibilities are honestly quite endless. This video is going to be structured a little bit differently than my normal video on the channel. First of all, we're going to run through and demonstrate every single secret activation and entrance that I have planned for you in today's video and then we're going to do the tutorial on how to build absolutely every single one of these in your bedrock edition worlds this tutorial is part of my advent calendar for december of 2020 every single day in december i'm releasing a brand new tutorial on the channel some sort of farm contraption or redstone build for you guys to enjoy in your worlds if you are enjoying these series thus far then of course make sure to leave a like on the video or possibly share the videos around with your friends and doing those two things has a massive impact on the channel seriously Seriously, thank you everyone who does that. It really, really does help out a ton. Of course, if you'd like to see all of the future videos personally, then make sure to subscribe so that you don't miss any. And let's go ahead and run through all of these secret activations and redstone, shall we? First of all, we have the lava. So this one you can activate in a couple of different ways. You can throw a trident at it, and as you can see, that'll activate that pressure plate, and then you can activate any form of redstone with it. You can also use a fishing rod if you like. As you can see, that does indeed turn on the piston. You could use an arrow, but arrows will, of course, stay there for about a minute, so you have to be aware of that. You could just have this lava be sitting on the floor in like a lava lake. You could have it pouring out the side of a mountain or as a feature in your base. The next one is the troll. This relies on throwing items directly into lava. As you can see, it appears that the item's actually getting burnt, but it is clearly not because they are showing up in the chest down here. So you can throw a lot of valuables in here. In fact, an entire stack of diamonds. And of course, every single one of those will end up in your hoppers. Now, there is the chance of items getting burned if you throw them long, or if you just catch it on the edge of the block before it goes in, but of course, if you're doing it right, it won't matter. 
Also, you can just throw in netherite and then it won't have a chance to burn either. And next up, we have my favorite form of activation, ding, ding, ding. <laughs> this is seriously the most powerful form of secret activation that is in this video because you can have multiple different outputs from the singular bell and it's seriously very, very powerful. Now, do keep in mind, this does rely on a bug, but it's actually a very reliable bug. So, for example, whenever you throw a projectile at a bell, that'll get launched and basically teleported about 15 or 20 blocks away which is super cool now as you can see it goes directly through this wall you could actually have solid blocks in all of these locations and the projectile would still end up on the pressure plate so you could bury your redstone inside of a mountain or have your activation in one building a ravine and then another building for your redstone and this system would still work perfectly fine it's basically wireless redstone and it's really really awesome but you do have to memorize where to stand that way the projectile and lands on the correct place so if we stand right here we're going to activate the iron redstone as you can see there I would recommend using a loyalty trident because of course you know it comes back to you and it sends a pulse instead of a long one minute signal with the arrow anyway if we stand right here we will activate the emerald redstone as you saw there and if we stand right here we will activate the diamond redstone as you see there it is very, very powerful, and you can have just about as many outputs as you like using a singular innocent bell. Our next one is the stair. This one is a super old school one, and I am so happy that this works on the Bedrock Edition. This has been around for at least like six years, and I remember doing this on Legacy Console Edition. Anyway, this has to do with two different stairs. Firstly, you have yourself a standard stair, and then you have a stair that turns the corner like this. Now, obviously, it's turning the corner. However, if you look at the hitbox of this part right here, you can actually look directly through it, place and break blocks, and it doesn't look any different. So if we reach right through here, we can activate ourselves a lever. There we go. There's a lever right there. As you can see, that can activate the piston. So it's a little bit, you know, difficult. However, if you get your aim down, if you're used to using this, this is an extremely, extremely sneaky way of building a secret activation. You do have to be careful what kind of stair you use, though, due to graphical bugs. As you can see, the andesite stairs have this weird line right here. It's pretty obvious that there is no connection right there. The quartz stairs also get weird lines, and so do the stairs on a brick stairs next up we got drop in all this one requires you to do is drop an item and that will get picked up by a hopper minecart and then that will of course activate your redstone this one is super basic but you can also set up an item filter so that you have to rename the item something specific before you throw it in there so there's a lot of opportunities with item sorting and things with this one but overall it's pretty basic the next one is sweet tooth and this one requires you to have a loyalty trident or a bow and arrow if we look all the way through here, we can throw a trident right through the gaps and the honey blocks, and that will activate some of the wooden pressure plates that are down here below, then activating your redstone. This relies on the small gap that is between honey blocks. As you can see, if we look at this, there is a hitbox of the honey, but we can peer directly between these two blocks, and of course, we can throw items through that, like a trident or an arrow. Next up is cornered. This one requires you to throw a trident or an arrow right at the corner of two blocks, and that'll actually go through the corner of the block and activate yourself a pressure plate. Your aim does have to be mildly precise, but as you can see, it's pretty straightforward. Now for arrows, you're gonna have to wait a minute for the arrows to despawn, or you gotta go jump to collect them, but that is why I prefer using a loyalty trident. This one is very, very sneaky in that there is so many different ways to hide this. Moving on to smelly, this one requires a composter. Now there's a couple of different ways of doing this one. You can either go ahead and click on the composter with enough compostable items until it composts and turns into bone meal. Once that bone meal gets generated, it'll go down into a hopper and that will activate your redstone, of course. Or if there's nothing in the actual composter, you can simply throw an item directly in there and that will activate your pistons as well. The sneaky bit about this is that if you have enough compost in there, you won't actually be able to throw an item in it and have it be collected by your hoppers. So this can look like just a super innocent composter that you can't interact with at all. 
but as soon as you go and click on it with another piece of vegetation, it turns into bone meal and activates your redstone. And next up is the obligatory paintings. Paintings are the most old school form of activation and entrance in Minecraft, and for good reason. There is so many different things that you can do. First of all, we got ourselves a two by two painting. No, you can't just walk it through the painting. We're not that simple. We go ahead and throw an item into the upper left, and then we can walk through the door. The item lands on a pressure plate, opens up the door, and that allows you to walk through. And then of course you can have that activate redstone if you feel like it. We also got a button so we can walk back through real simple. The next one, no, you can't walk through it either, you silly. You gotta throw an item into this one as well. And then of course that activates whatever redstone you want, powering an entrance somewhere else. And for the final one, yeah, you can just you can just walk through this one. The final version is a one by one, and for this one you will need an elytra or to be swimming, and you'll need a little bit of lag, that way you can actually fly into that one by one hole, and then fit into your secret entrance. Next is the shulker, this is pretty well known, but if you stand on a shulker with a block above your head, open the shulker, you can fall right through it to your secret area. And then we got the barrel. This one is actually a pretty fascinating one, because observers can detect barrels opening. As you can see, if we open this barrel, that's going to activate the piston. Furthermore, you can further activate the observer by messing with the inventory. As you can see, just putting items into the inventory or taking them out activates the piston on the right side over there. So a very fascinating one. Barrels are, of course, used for decoration absolutely everywhere in Minecraft because they are so cool and just so useful in general. So the fact that you can just go ahead and open one and that activates some redstone is pretty cool. Next is the bookworm. This one's going to be pretty obvious so be careful how you use this but of course if you open up a lectern with a book on it and then you switch the pages of it an observer can actually detect that lantern to switching pages and then of course activate redstone from there alternatively you can use a comparator to read what page you are on and use that as kind of a combination lock moving over to gone digging we got ourselves a very useful one out in the wilds of the minecraft world you can put this just about anywhere and no one would ever be the wiser. All you need is a shovel, chances are you likely carry around one of these all day, possibly even on the hotbar. So we go ahead and right click on the dirt that turns it into a path block, activating our observer, resetting the dirt back to dirt, and then of course that can open your entrance. You can also use a hoe if you want, but for some reason that activates the system twice, so it's not quite ideal, and chances are you're not taking your hose all the way around the world with you. Next up is wet feet. This one requires you to stand on a block pretty much anywhere, but ideally in the corner. Go ahead and waterlog that block. It'll get retracted and you will fall through like so and to a water pool. That way you can then refill your bucket. This one relies on an observer detecting when that block gets filled. The block then gets retracted, unwaterlogging it and resetting the system for the next use. Next, we have the item frame combination lock. These have been around for ever since item frames were introduced and this requires you to rotate an item and as you can see if it's on the incorrect place your redstone output will not have any signal and once it gets around to the correct place of course you will have yourself a signal just having an arrow on the wall isn't really that you know discreet but if you put yourself like a stone block or some form of memento then that would be a lot less obvious and let's hop into the tutorial for this build shall we there's going to be a world download for this down below for every single different type of secret activation in this video so you can test them out and play with them yourselves there's not going to be a materials list because well there's 18 different builds. <laughs> anyway, for the lava and the troll, you're going to need 3x3 three three areas. For the lava build, place in yourself a pressure plate, block above that, and then four blocks surrounding it like so. Put lava right there. That is the activation done. Of course, you throw through a trident or an arrow, and that activates your pressure plate. For the troll, you want a chest to store your items. Hopper going into that, and then a comparator reading from that chest like so. Block above the hopper, and then blocks surrounding the hopper on all sides place in your lava right there and then you can throw in just about any item that you like if you don't want your items to burn of course throw in netherite or something that won't burn in lava as you can see all of our items are going into the chest the stair requires a two by three area and of course you want your stairs to be the same material as your wall block 
rocks. So this is perfect for like the side of a mountain or something like that. Place in your two base wall blocks, a stair facing sideways and then a stair facing backwards. Place in a block here and then either a lever or a button or something else to activate your redstone. The aim can be difficult but you want to look right through this part of the wall and then as you can see we are flicking that lever back there. If you're having a difficulty with the aim you can flip these stairs upside down. So stair right there and then another stair right there and then you would look through this part of the wall and flick the lever like so. It really just depends on how good you are at aiming through this little gap. Anyway, drop in requires a 1x3 area. Place in yourself a chest, hopper going into that chest, and then a comparator right there reading from that hopper. Rail, and then your floor block is going to be at this layer, and then all you need is a hopper minecart right there. And this block right here can be part of a floor, or a wall, or in a corner, or really anywhere. But if we drop an item right there, as you can see, that's going to activate the comparator. Sweet Tooth requires a 2x3 area, and you're going to start off by placing in pressure plates right there, and honey blocks above that. Your floor layer is right here, and I would just suggest putting like two layers of honey blocks up. I have no idea how you're going to make this blend into your builds. That is up to you. And uh, basically that's it. You can go ahead and throw yourself a loyalty trident down in between the blocks to activate your pressure plates. It might be a little bit obvious that there's pressure plates down there, in which case you can lower them down a couple more blocks and put more layers of honey. Or you can make it darker down here by surrounding everything in solid blocks, which you'll likely have here anyway. And that'll make it significantly harder to tell that there is anything down there. But it still makes it just as easy to activate those pressure plates. Cornered is super easy to build. You just build up your wall and then on top of your wall you have the pressure plate and then you have your ceiling blocks This can be pretty much anywhere as high off the ground as you like You throw your trident or your arrow right at the corner and that will activate your redstone activation As for smelly, this one is also pretty easy You want a chest hopper going into that chest and then get yourself a comparator reading out of that hopper like so Place yourself a composter above that, and this is where your floor is going to be. And then, of course, you can have your wall there, or you can move down your comparator and have your chest to be right there. That'll work too, and then you can just have this out in the middle of the floor. Whatever you want to do, it's very flexible. Anyway, for this one, you just go ahead and throw yourself an item into the composter that will activate the redstone. Or if you want to be more sneaky, you can fill this thing up with a lot of compost and then items won't work. So you have to add more things to it for the composter to actually activate it on its own. Now for all the different painting activations, for the 2x2, two two, you want a block there, pressure plate there, and then a wooden door or an iron door right here like so. Go ahead and cover yourself that up with a painting, throw an item onto the pressure plate, and you'll be able to walk through here just fine. It's kind of hard to walk through if you aren't lined up right, but there you go. <laughs> Might take a little bit of getting used to for this design. For the 2x1 version, where you just toss an item into it, you will need yourself to mine out these two blocks right here. Put a chest there, saw a block, a comparator, hopper right there to pick up the item, and then you'll need a button right here to hold up the painting. Go ahead and toss your painting on the front of that like so. You can toss an item in there. That'll get picked up by the hopper. Activate your redstone, and that's all there is to it. For the painting that you legitimately just walk straight through, all you need to do is put a couple of buttons right there. Crouch, place a painting on that, and bam, you can walk right through the painting. It's the same for the one by one version, but I was just putting just like any old painting on that you want. You will need a little bit of lag, and you'll need an elytra to get through that one by one hole. The shulker and the barrel are both incredibly easy. For the shulker, you want a two block gap underneath the shulker for you to go into, and then you want a two block gap above the shulker as well, with a block above your head. You open the thing, you fall through, and profit. As for the barrel, the easiest thing to do with this one is to hide the barrel and blend it in with other, you know, spruce planks in the area. If you're a person that just puts piles of barrels everywhere, this one's going to be really great for you. Anyway, just go ahead and put an observer facing any barrel in the world. As soon as you open this thing, you're going to be getting yourself a redstone output. 
I was just opening it and then closing it immediately, like super quickly. That way it only sends one pulse because when you open it, it sends a pulse. And when you close it, it sends a pulse as well. In addition to every time the inventory is messed with. Now, if you don't feel like dealing with that, this can also detect inventory changes in a double chest, but it does not detect when it gets opened. So you can just have an empty double chest somewhere. And then as soon as you put an item in it, bam, that activates your redstone. Moving on to the bookworm. This one is also very easy. You want to place down yourself a lectern with a written book in it and then go ahead and face an observer right underneath it So it can detect when you change the page now anytime you change the page that is going to activate an observer So if someone goes through here and flicks all the pages a million times that could break your redstone depending on what you're using What you'll likely want to do is use a comparator out the backside to read the signal strength Depending on what page you are on it's gonna have a different signal strength so you can use that to activate your redstone kind of similar to how we have the item frame combination lock. Gone digging is of course a very simple as well. You want yourself a piece of dirt right there, observer facing that dirt going into a solid block, sticky piston facing forwards, and then a block in front of that sticky piston. You can use pretty much anything that you like, but if you're gonna use dirt, make sure there's a block above that dirt. That way this doesn't stay a path block, for example. Anyway, every time you till this, you are going to activate the system. You wanna take your redstone output from this block right here here. If you're using a shovel, use a two tick repeater. That way it only activates once. And if you're using a hoe, you need to make sure that this is on three ticks. That way it only activates once as well. And that's actually a different way of differentiating who is using the door. If you have a friend that is always using a hoe to activate the system, you can tell when they enter the base due to the two activations. Whereas a shovel will only activate it once. So that's something tricky you can do. Wet feet needs to be built in the corner and it requires a six wide by four deep area for the redstone. We're gonna switch out this corner block with an upper slab like so, and then make an observer face that slab, solid block out the backside of it right there. You want two blocks and these areas, repeater right here on two ticks, redstone torch, and then get yourself a sticky piston off the side of that torch that'll extend and then grab that slab. Anytime that slab retracts, the water inside of it is gonna get deleted. So that is how the system resets. Anyway, we now need to go ahead and place in a little bit more redstone in this area. You want a repeater right here on three ticks, redstone dust, and the repeater right here on four ticks as well. That way the system doesn't constantly cycle. Anyway, to use the door, you stand on the slab, water log it with your bucket, and then you just simply fall down. The water gets removed, you're in water, so you can just simply fill your bucket again. The item frame combination lock is gonna be extremely simple. Item frame on the wall, item in it, compared at the backside, and then a maximum of eight redstone dust going off in one direction. So now you need to rotate this into whatever orientation you want to activate your redstone. So let's say we want this location right here to activate our system. We're gonna see which redstone dust lights up, uh, this right here is the final piece of that lights up. This one is now off. We can test this by putting redstone torches. This one turns off, meaning that this redstone dust is on, which is what we want. Place yourself a repeater right there going into a block redstone dust right there and then a torch right there this is going to be the output from your system which will then power your redstone circuit and anytime this item frame is not in that location your circuit will not be powered but when we rotate this to the exact location you can see that that now turns on and finally we have ding 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 this one is the most powerful of course and that is why we have saved the best for last with this tutorial so with this one you can see theoretically have a bunch of different activations from a single bell and all of them are completely secret of course it entirely depends on where you are standing in your world as you can see we got a bunch of different identifier blocks around and how you want to do this is simply throw a trident at the bell that'll bounce off and land in a location and all the projectiles no matter where you throw them from are always going to go north so if we throw this trident you'll see that that ended up over here as well to configure your system what you want to do is stand on a block of a choice we're gonna do the iron block throw a trident at the bell and then simply go find where that trident landed so that trident landed right here in this block actually down a layer so all you're gonna do is go ahead and put yourself a pressure plate right there I'm gonna mine out a couple blocks so we can see that pressure plate get activated 
Anyway, if we go over here now, we should be able to throw that trident right at the bell. And as you can see, it did land right in there on that spot. Now keep in mind that this is very specific to where you are standing. So we have to stand kind of off to the side and corner of this block for the trident to land on our pressure plate. If we go a little bit in this direction, it's not going to land where you want it to. So be aware of that, which makes this all the more secretive, especially if you only have a single activation point. So I went ahead and set up five different activation points and I've decided to stand right in the middle of the block because that is so much easier. As you can see, that trident landed on the front pressure plate if we do the diamond one next that is going to land on that back pressure plate as for the emerald one that will of course land right there on the emerald if we stand in the middle of the iron this should land on the iron one this one's a little bit finicky maybe not quite but yeah there you go we gotta stand a little bit off to the side as for the slime one we can stand right in the middle of the slime block activate that guy and as you can see that lands on the slime pressure plate so this is a pretty easy system to configure of course you gotta make sure you are standing exactly correctly otherwise it can not land on the pressure plate or possibly activate other pressure plates around it if your standing position is incorrect obviously you don't want these actual marker blocks to be in the ground but there are secret ways to remind yourself where to stand such as carpets paintings little bits of decor or different kinds of blocks in the ground if you have a texturized floor if you have any questions, comments, or concerns about today's Bedrock Edition tutorial or any of these secret entrances or activations, then of course let me know in the comment section down below. I'm always trying to help you guys out as best as I possibly can. Also, if you made it to this point in the video, thank you so much. You're a very dedicated viewer. You have earned yourself a cookie. Nom nom. Anyway, if you did make it to this point in the video, you clearly enjoyed it or you just hate me that much to hear my voice. So consider leaving a like on the video or sharing it with your friends so that they can enjoy it or hate on it as well. If you want to enjoy more videos like this in the future, then of course consider subscribing if you have not already. Seriously, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys down in the comment section and in the next one. And then there was silence.